Hello, everyone. Today we're going to do package tracer of CCNA2 version 74.5.1. Package tracer inter-VLAN routing challenge. Here's addressing table, VLAN and port assignments table, your VLAN number, VLAN name, interface range, which is for the port assignment. Scenario, in this activity, you will demonstrate and reinforce your ability to implement inter-VLAN routing, including configuring IP addresses, VLANs, trunking, and sub-interfaces. Instructions configure the devices to meet the following requirements. Assign IP address to R1 and S1 based on the addressing table. R1, S1, configure IP address on it. Okay, let's go to R1. R1 has two interfaces are in use, G00, G01. Okay, let me go here. G01, G00. Okay, let's go to R1. Let's check the IP configuration information first. Show IP interface. Oh, it's brief. Okay, here, G00, the IP address is configured already. Here, IP G00 20.2, yes, correct. But G01, no configuration. Yeah, here, look at here, there are a bunch of uh, sub-interfaces need to be configured on this physical interface, G01. Sub-interfaces are virtual interfaces. Okay, let's go to do the configuration, sub-interface. To configure terminal interface G01.10. Here, the IP address is here 172.17.10.1. So, IP address 172.17.10.1, followed by the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Oh, here. The message configuring IP routing on the LAN sub interface is only allowed if that sub interface is already configured as part of IEEE 802.10. IEEE 802.1Q. Oh, that means we need to do the encapsulation first, encapsulation VLAN first before configuring IP address on this sub interface. When we see 802.1Q, this is the VLAN tagging or the VLAN header, which is added to added to the Ethernet frame. Uh, let us know that this Ethernet frame includes VLAN information. And also we know that each sub-interface represents a VLAN. Okay, let's do the encapsulation first. Encap Encapsulation dot one Q followed by the VLAN number. Here's VLAN 10. We see that we use the sub interface number and the VLAN number, the same number 10. It is not required, but it is customary, which is good for the network management. Because G01.10 represents VLAN 10. We use the same number 10. So next we, uh, we need to configure the IP address. I use up arrow, quickly get command, 10.1. Okay, this time this IP address is accepted. Next we need to configure, uh, we still use the up arrow, G01.20, G01.20. Okay, 20, encapsulation. This time it's encapsulation VLAN 1Q, VLAN 20. IP address, IP address here. You look at the IP address, all the numbers, this, uh, decimal numbers are the same, except the third one, 10, 20, 30, 80, 8, 99. And subnet mask are the same too. Okay, we just change the third uh, decimal number. Here's a 20. Next is uh, sub interface G01.30. 
encapsulation dot one q mean and thirty IP address thirty dot one. Next is G01.88. Encapsulation. Dot one Q VLAN. Eight eight. IP address. Here's eight eight dot one. Next is interface G01.99. Encapsulation. Dot one Q VLAN ninety nine. IP address is ninety nine dot one. Okay. After we finish configure all this sub interface, we need to activate this sub interfaces. Um, we activate these sub interfaces by activate the physical interface GSR1. Let's go to the G physical interface GSR1. Interface G01 activate is no shutdown, this command. All right, so now you will see after this physical interface is enabled, all the sub interface on it will be automatic, automatically enabled. It's a show IP interface, brave. Let's check, yeah. So this time the physical interface is up, up. All the sub interfaces on it are activated as well automatically. Okay, it's good. Next, we need to configure IP address on S1. S1 here, S1. We know that uh, switch use layer two MAC address to transmit information. Uh, switch don't need IP address, but when we see IP address on switch, this IP address, this IP address only can be configured on the virtual interface switch to virtual interface because the physical ports on switch don't support IP address because IP address is a layer three IP address. And the IP address on switch is only used for the management purpose, not for the transmitting information. Okay, so let's, um, Let's go to configure this management interface. So in case configure ter configure terminal. Okay, interface, this interface is a virtual interface. So interface VNA 99, virtual interface. Okay, IP address. Your IP address is 99.10. 172.17.99.10. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. All right. Finishing this part, next to configure the default gateway on S1. Default gateway is here. 99.1. Okay, let's go back to the global configuration mode to configure the default gateway, IP default gateway. Default gateway is 172.17.99.1. Good. And uh, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. We know that each sub interface represents a VLAN. And uh, each sub-interface IP address is that VLAN's default gateway. Here, G01.99 represents VLAN 99, all right? So sub-interface G01.99 IP address is the VLAN 99's default gateway. Next is... Uh, 
create name and assign VLANs on S1 based on the VLAN and port assignments table, ports should be in access mode. Your VLAN names should match the names in the table exactly. The VLAN name is uh, case sensitive. So the first letters are uh, should be the um, capital. Be careful of that. Okay, so we configure the VLAN. So here VLAN 10, so here VLAN 10, name is faculty, name is the faculty, F capital, faculty, S capital staff. VLAN 20, name is students, S capital students. VLAN 30, Name is guest, G capital. Default, D capital. And then it's VLAN 99. VLAN 88, sorry. Name is native. VLAN 99, this time it's 99. Name is management. Okay. Okay, we configured all the VLAN. Next, we need to assign this switch port to the VLANs. Here's a V, we need to use the interface range. Okay, go back and the interface range interface here first is F011 to 17 assigned to VLAN 10. Okay, F interface range, F0, 11 to 17. Okay, switch port mode is axis. Switch port axis VLAN 10. Okay, next I use up arrow again to quickly get a command. This time is F018 to 24. 18 to 24. Switch port mode axis, same. Switch port axis, VLAN 20. This time is VLAN 20. Next is uh, interface uh, F06 to 10. 6 to 10, switch port mode axis, switch port axis, um, VLAN 30. Mm, okay, fast ethernet switch ports finish. And next we need to configure G01 on S1 as static trunk assign native VLAN. So here we can see the access ports are the ports directly connected to the end users. So these three ports are access ports. But here the G01, this port should be the trunk port because it connected to the um, another network device R1. So G01 should be configured as trunk. Okay. Okay, interface G01. Switch port mode trunk. And switch port trunk um, is a native. VLAN 88. Okay. Okay, so we configured G01 on S1 as trunk port. G01 on R1 is automatically changed to trunk port after we configure all these sub interfaces. So now 
both these two interfaces are trunk ports. So this link between S1 and R1 is a trunk link. Next is all ports that are not assigned to a VLAN should be disabled. So from here, what we know, Switch has a totally 24 fast Ethernet ports and two gigabit Ethernet ports. So here, the 11, 17, 18, 24, 6 to 10. So the Switch ports from F01 to 5 and the gigabit Ethernet G02, this six switch ports are not assigned to any VLAN. And we can check from here. We can use um, a command show VLAN brave to see here. All these switch ports are assigned to VLAN 10, 20, 30, but here on VLAN 1 is by default, this six switch ports, F0125 and G02, are not assigned to any VLANs. So these six switch ports should be disabled. Here's a disabled. Okay. Go to configure terminal. We still use the interface range, interface range, F0125, comma, and G02. This six interface should be disabled. So use shut down. Okay, let's check. Show IP interface brave. Okay, you see? F0125, administratively done, correct. G02, administratively done, correct. All right, did it. Next is configure inter-VLAN routing on R1 based on the addressing table. Inter-VLAN routing on R1, what does that mean? Okay, on S1, we configured, okay, look at here. On S1, we configured we configure G01 on the trunk port. We configure VLAN 88 as a native VLAN on the trunk port G01. But on the router, we don't, we still don't configure the sub interface G01.88 as native yet. So here is so encapsulation dot one Q88. We should add native after the 88. That's what it means. All right. So each because each VLAN, each sub interface represents a VLAN. So G01.88 represents VLAN 88, which is native VLAN. Native VLAN. So let's go to um, in configure terminal interface G01.88. Let's do encapsulation. Encapsulation dot one Q eight eight and native. That's what it means. Add a native here. All right, so native VLAN is for the untagged, untagged traffic. So what is tagged at untagged traffic? Look at here, these three VLANs, VLAN 10, 20, 30, this is a tagged data traffic, tagged. The tagged or the add VLAN number because the encapsulation dot one Q followed by the VLAN number. So it is VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So this is a tagged traffic, which is generated by the user, by these three computers. And this tagged information arrive S1, S1 will transfer this tagged traffic to the R1. 
And also S1 will transmit the untagged traffic to R1 as well. But how the untagged traffic is generated, there are different situations. One situation is untagged traffic comes from the old legacy devices which don't support 802.1Q protocol. That is untagged traffic come from. Another situation is the untagged traffic is generated by the switch. How does switch generate the untagged traffic? When switch use SSH or telnet to remotely access R1, switch S1 is generating management traffic because SSH and the telnet are management action. And the management traffic is untagged traffic. So in other words, gen a switch is generating untagged management traffic when it use SSH or telnet to remotely access R1. Okay. And a switch will put all these untagged traffic into the native VLAN. That is the native VLAN used for. All right. Okay, our completion status is 100%. That means we successfully finish this package so inter VLAN routing challenge. Here they ask us to verify connectivity R1, S1, at all PCs should be able to ping each other and the server. I just simply ping from PC1 to server. You guys can do the rest because here completion status 100%. That means that the ping should be successful. I just ping from PC1 in server 172.17.50. Da 254. All right. So, yeah, this is the server's IP address. It takes a little bit longer time uh, for the ARP, the ARP request. ARP is address resolution protocol. Should be success. Yes. Let's try again. So, four ARP requests responded. Success. All right. So we finished this uh, Pegasus interview and routing challenge. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my video, please thumbs up and subscribe my channel and share with your friends. See you next time.